Pearson's Correlation Coefficient. Hey city buddies, it's Rain! Today, let's explore Pearson's Correlation Coefficient. Carl Pearson He was an English mathematician and biased statistician, and he established the discipline of mathematical statistics. Carl Pearson is also known as the leading founder of the modern field of statistics. Aside from that, he is also the proponent of the term standard deviation. And the Pearson product moment, coefficient of correlation, also known as the Pearson's correlation coefficient. So what is a correlation? The word correlation is derived from the Latin words core, meaning together, and relatio, which means relation. To put it in simple words, correlation is the mutual relationship or connection between two or more things. Pearson's correlation is used in statistics to measure the strength and direction of the linear relationship between two numerical variables x and y. It is denoted by the variable r and is computed using the formula r is equal to n times summation xy minus summation x times summation y all over square root of quantity n times summation x squared minus summation x raised to 2 times quantity n summation y squared minus summation y raised to 2 wherein n is the number of data points, x is the first set of variables, and y is the second set of variables. Now, let us discuss the five steps in solving Pearson's correlation coefficient. To guide us with the steps, here is example number one. Step number one, fill up the necessary columns needed to satisfy the equation. The table should consist of five columns containing x, y, xy, x squared, and y squared consecutively. Example number one. The given are x is equal to 1, 2, and 3. y is equal to 4, 5, and 6. So let us place the x variables in the first column while the second column contains all the y variables. On the other hand, the third column, which contains xy, or x times y, is the combination of multiplying each x variables to each y variables. So 1 times 4 is equal to 4. 2 times 5 is equal to 10. And 3 times 6 is equal to 18. The x squared or the fourth column contains the x variables that are squared. Just like this one. It is also similar to multiplying each variable by itself. 1 squared or 1 times 1 is equal to 1. 2 squared or 2 times 2 is equal to 4. And 3 squared or 3 times 3 is equal to 9. And the same goes with y squared. So this time we are going to do the same procedure, but we will use all the y variables. Just like this one. And it is the same as multiplying each y variable by itself. 4 squared or 4 times 4 is equal to 16. 5 squared or 5 times 5 is equal to 25. And 6 squared or 6 times 6 is equal to 36. Let's move on to the step 2. Get the summation or add all the values in each column. So the first column you need to add 1 plus 2 plus 3. The second column add 4 plus 5 plus 6 and so on. So the summation of x is equal to 6. Then the summation of y is equal to 15. On the other hand, the summation of xy is equal to 32, while the summation of x squared is equal to 14. Lastly, the summation of y squared is equal to 77. Step number 3. Substitute the values in the formula below. 
wherein n is the number of data points, x is the first set of variables, and y is the second set of variables. Let us check if we completed all the needed data. We already have the first set of variables. These are the summation of x, which is 6, summation xy is equal to 32, which also contains a combination of x and y variables, and the summation of x squared, which is 14. The values of the second set of variables are also completed. These are the summation of y, which is 15, summation of xy, which is 32, and summation of y squared, which is 77. And the number of data points denoted by n is equivalent to 3. Let us see why is n equal to 3. Let us count the data points in the first column. We have 1, 2, and 3. The second column also have 3 data points. Same with the third column. 3 data points are also present in the fourth column. Same with the last column. Therefore, we can conclude that the number of data points, or n, in the example number 1 is equal to 3. So, let us continue to substitute the values in the formula. So, r is equal to 3 times 32 minus 6 times 15 all over the square root of quantity 3 times 14 minus 6 raised to 2 times quantity 3 times 77 minus 15 raised to 2. Moving on, we have step number 4, which is solve for the equation. 3 times 32 is equal to 96. 6 times 15 is equal to 90. 3 times 14 is equal to 42. 6 raised to 2 is equal to 36. 3 times 77 is equal to 231. 15 raised to 2 is equal to 225. 96 minus 90 is equal to 6. 42 minus 36 is equal to 6. 231 minus 225 is equal to 6. 6 times 6 equals 36. And the square root of 36 is equal to 6. So 6 over 6 is equivalent to 1, which is the final answer. The last step, which is step number 5, is interpret the value of r and identify the relationship of the x and y variables. So we can interpret the value of r by either looking at the table or by looking at the graph. Let us first look at the table. The first three rows of the table are as follows. An r of positive negative 1 is a perfect positive or a negative correlation. An r of positive negative 0.90 to positive negative 0.99 is a very high positive or a negative correlation. An r of positive negative 0.70 to positive negative 0.90 is a high positive or a negative correlation. An r of positive negative 0.50 to positive negative 0.70 is a moderate positive or negative correlation. An r of positive negative 0.30 to positive negative 0.50 is a low positive or negative correlation. The last two rows of the table are as follows. An r of positive negative 0.10 to positive negative 0.30 is a very low positive or negative correlation. An r of positive negative 0 0.0 to positive negative 0 0.10 is a markedly low and negligible positive or negative correlation. So the answer to the example number 1, which is r is equal to positive 1, is interpreted as a perfect positive correlation, which means that the relationship of x and y variables are strong. We can also determine the relationship of x and y variables by looking at its graph. Here is an example of the graph of a positive correlation. It is considered a positive correlation if the direction of the plotted points in the graph is an upward slope from left to right. This is how a negative correlation will appear in a graph. If the direction of the plotted point is a downward slope, then it is interpreted as a negative correlation. And there is no correlation when the plotted points do not have a definite direction. 
because they are just scattered in the graph. Here is the graph of example number 1, wherein r is equal to 1. The plotted points are 1, 4, 2, 5, and 3, 6. And by looking at the graph, we can see that the direction of the slope is upward, so it is a positive correlation. Activity time! Answer the following word problems. Question number one. During the 25th Intramurals of Learning with Rain Academy, entitled Fitness Comes in All Sizes, five students participated in the 25-kilometer race, but only one was successful in finishing it, as shown in the table. The participants are Alice, who weighs 10 kilograms, covered a distance of 5 kilometers. Elsa, who weighs 20 kilograms, covered a distance of 10 kilometers. Kendra, who weighs 30 kilograms, covered a distance of 15 kilometers. Leon, who weighs 40 kilograms, covered a distance of 20 kilometers. And Rio, who weighs 50 kilograms, covered a distance of 25 kilometers. The x variables are 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, while the y variables are 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. Feel free to pause the video and remember to follow the five steps in solving Pearson's correlation coefficient. Step 1. Fill up the necessary columns needed to satisfy the equation. Step 2. Get the summation or add all the values in each column. Step 3. Substitute the values in the formula below. Step 4. Solve the equation. And Step 5. Interpret the value of r and identify the relationship of x and y variables. Question number 2. A group of 6 high school students decided to participate in the food challenge competition wherein the winner is determined by the most number of pizzas he or she eats in the shortest period of time. The following data were recorded. So the first three participants are Jenny, Joel, and Joy. Jenny ate 12 pizzas in 40 minutes. Joel ate 8 pizzas in 22 minutes. And Joy ate 12 pizzas in 35 minutes. Well, the last three participants are Leo, Raven, and Ricky. Leo ate 23 pizzas in 20 minutes. Raven ate 24 pizzas in 20 minutes. And Ricky ate 5 pizzas in 19 minutes. The x variables are 12, 8, 12, 23, 24, and 5. While the y variables are 40, 22, 35, 20, 20, and 19. Pause this video and answer the word problem using the five steps in solving Pearson's correlation coefficient. Step 1. Fill up the necessary columns needed to satisfy the equation. Step 2. Get the summation or add all the values in each column. Step 3. Substitute the values in the formula below. Step 4. Solve the equation. And step 5, interpret the value of r and identify the relationship of x and y variables. Checking time! Question number 1. During the 25th Intramurals of Learning with Rain Academy, entitled Fitness Comes in All Sizes, five students participated in the 25-kilometer race, but only one was successful in finishing it, as shown in the table. Here are the data collected. Step number one, fill up the necessary columns needed to satisfy the equation. This is what your table should look like. Let's move on to the step two. Get the summation or add all the values in each column. Summation of x is equal to 150. Summation of y is equal to 75. Summation xy is equal to 2820 while summation x squared is equal to 5,500, and summation of y squared is equal to 1,375. Step number 3. Substitute the values in the formula below. 
So if you substitute the values in the formula, R is equal to 5 times 2,820 minus 150 times 75 all over the square root of quantity 5 times 5,500 minus 150 raised to 2 times the quantity of 5 times 1,375 minus 75 raised to 2. Moving on, we have step number 4, which is solve for the equation. The final answer is r is equal to 1. The last step, which is step number 5, is interpret the value of r and identify the relationship of the x and y variables. So it is a perfect positive correlation because the size of correlation coefficient is equal to positive 1. We can conclude that the relationship between the weight of participants and the distance that they have covered is strong. Question number two. A group of six high school students decided to participate in the food challenge competition wherein the winner is determined by the most number of pizzas he or she eats in the shortest period of time. The following data were recorded. Step number one. Fill up the necessary columns needed to satisfy the equation. This is what the first set of rows in the table should look like. And the last three rows should look like this. Let's move on to the step two. Get the summation or add all the values in each column. The summation of x is 84. The summation of y is 156. Summation xy is equal to 2,111, while summation x squared is equal to 1,482, and summation of y squared is equal to 4,470. Step number 3. Substitute the values in the formula below. So if you substitute the values in the formula, it should be r is equal to 6 times 2,111, minus 84 times 156, all over the square root of quantity 6 times 1,482 minus 84 raised to 2, times quantity 6 times 4,470 minus 156 raised to 2. Moving on, we have step number 4, which is solve for the equation. Final answer is r is equal to negative 0.2052. The last step, which is step number 5, is interpret the value of r and identify the relationship of the x and y variables. The answer to question number 2 is a very low negative correlation, which means that it has a weak relationship. That's it for today's video. See you soon, study buddies. Bye! If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe! If you want to watch more of our videos, click here.